Thailand, it's a standard practice when a John is going to a monastery he's never been to before. If he wants to check out how serious the monks are there about practicing, he looks at the meditation paths, the walking paths. If they're well swept and obviously worn by walking, that's a good sign. One of the reasons, of course, is if you look at the place where someone sits, you can't see how worn it is through the sitting. But the other is that walking meditation really is an important part of the practice. People tend to forget that. For most people, the emphasis is on the sitting, and then the walking is just an opportunity to rest from the sitting a little bit. But that's not the, the only purpose for the walking. In the canon, when the Buddha talks about the benefits of walking meditation, some of them are, are health benefits. But in terms of the practice, he said that the concentration that comes while walking is not easily destroyed. And this is important to think about. When we sit quietly, we're trying to get the mind still, and we try to get the body still, too, as a way of helping the mind along. But you also want to be able to keep the mind still in the midst of movement, in the midst of activity. And that's where the walking meditation comes in. When you get up from your sitting meditation, try to maintain the same center that you have while sitting as you walk. You might think of it as a bowl full of oil that you're carrying with you as you get up from the seat and walk over to the path and then continue walking. You don't want to spill a drop. And that requires a readjustment of where your focus is. Often when we open our eyes, the first tendency is for the mind to go flowing out the eyes, and you're out in that world, you're in your visual sphere, and you lose that sense of being inside the body. So remember that you don't want to lose that sense. You want to maintain that sense even as you open your eyes. And you'll find that it's, it's almost like it knocks you out of balance the first time you try that. But it's important that you learn how to maintain the sense of being inside your body, being in the breath, even while walking, even while moving. Because eventually you want to get to the point where you can Maintain that same sense of center in all your activities, talking, working, whatever. So this is a good first step in that direction. This is why walking meditation is such an important part of connecting your sitting meditation with mindfulness throughout daily life. As you get on the path. If you find that your center has slipped, immediately bring it back. Then walk to the end of the path. You can hold your hands in front of the body or behind the body. Just don't swing your arms around. Then when you get to the end of the path, stop for just a brief second to reestablish mindfulness in case it slipped off while you were walking. And then turn, stop for a second, and then walk back in the other direction. And always try to turn in the same direction either turning clockwise or turning counterclockwise, to the right or to the left, so that you don't have to have, make the decision which way you're going to turn at the end of the path. And otherwise, try to maintain the same sense of center that you had while you're sitting here with your eyes closed, i.e. you focus on the breath. And even though you're walking, and looking to make sure you don't trip over things. You want to maintain the sense of being centered in the breath as much as you can. And don't let the, the looking and the walking pull you away or pull you out. This requires practice, maintaining your center in the midst of movement. And it's important for several reasons. 
one, as I said just now. It gets you used to maintaining your center in other activities as well. So that even when you're engaged in complex activities, even when you're thinking about things, you can still have a sense of inhabiting the body, being centered with the breath. You may not have to know when the breath is coming in, when the breath is going out, but have a sense of body sitting here, and you're inhabiting the body. You're not going off entirely to some other thought world. That keeps you grounded and gives you a place to return to as soon as you've done whatever work needs to be done in that thought world, because otherwise you you hop trains from one train of thought to the next train of thought, like a hobo. And you end up in Lincoln, Nebraska. Whereas if you're grounded here, as soon as the thought world has done its work, you're back here with the breath again. That way you can stay grounded in the midst of your different activities and you'll get lost in the course of the day. The other reason why it's important to develop this ability to stay centered in the midst of activity is that while you're doing your walking meditation, you begin to see how the mind slips out. It's often the case you gain insight into the movements of the mind a lot more easily while you're doing walking meditation than when sitting. Because when you're sitting, everything is supposed to be still. You can clamp down on everything. and get very, very centered, very, very still. But while you're walking, you still have to watch, you still have to move. There are decisions to be made in the simple matter of walking. Where you're going to place your eyes, what you're going to look at, what you're not going to look at. Simple things like that, but still there are movements of the mind. And it's very easy to get a sense of how the mind tends to flow out. And Buddhun talks about this in his basic definitions of the Four Noble Truths. And so the mind that goes flowing out, that's, uh, that's stress, the cause of stress. And it's good to be able to catch that in action, to see the current, to see the flow. And John Lee also talks about this in his discussion of the frames of reference. Look at his discussion of mind, the sense of awareness that's still and bright, and then there's something that flows out of that awareness and goes to sense objects. Sometimes it's looking for something to get angry about, sometimes it's looking for something to get greedy about. And the reason we don't notice this is we tend to go with the flow. But if you put yourself in a position, as you are when you're doing walking meditation, that you're going to stay still, even though there are other things that have to move. You can develop the skill that's needed to stay still while there is that current of the mind flowing out, and you don't go with it. You watch it go for a little ways, and because you're not inhabiting it, it just falls short. So you get to see the mind in action. This way it's a lot easier not to go, go along with everything that comes flowing through the mind. You get a stronger sense of the observer that can watch the movements of the mind as events, but not as worlds that you want to inhabit. There are potential worlds. If you get in them, they could turn into all kinds of stories, but you see them simply as events and you don't get involved, unless you see that they really are useful. This puts you in a much better position not to get carried away by things. And the same ability to watch movement but not move along with it. it helps you analyze your own concentration. The canon talks about this ability to step back a bit 
when you get involved in a state of concentration. The Buddha recommends that to begin with, you first indulge in it, you really enjoy it, you immerse yourself in it, you get absorbed. In other words, you really plant your mind on the object, become one with the object. And while you're doing that, you can't really think about what you're doing. You're just focused on the object in the beginning. You adjust it here, adjust it there, but then when you've done enough adjusting, you just allow yourself to enjoy it, get immersed in it. And when you're in that state, you can't do much analysis of any kind of all. But then he talks about stepping back a bit. The image he gives is of a person sitting who's looking at someone who's lying down, or a person who's standing looking at someone who's sitting. You're above the other person a little bit, and you can observe what the other person looks like. In the same way, you can learn how to observe the mind while it's still. You know, you're not so totally implanted in the object. But at the same time, you don't totally leave concentration. And the reason you can do this is because you've developed this skill through walking meditation. The ability for the observer to be still, even though there's a little bit of movement in the mind. And this way you can observe your state of concentration. The Buddha says there are lots of ways you can observe it. Look for whatever form or feeling or perception, thought construct or consciousness is there, and you can contemplate it. One simple way is contemplating in terms of the perception. To what extent does the perception that you're using create stress for the mind, or is the word he uses in Pali, disturbance? Learn to observe that perception, the label you place on things, as an act of the mind. There's an element of intention behind it, and many times there's a a whole frame for, the, for that particular perception. And you, as you see it as an activity, the perception is one thing, the actual object is something else. One of the classic analogies the Buddha gives is of a mirage. You see a tree in the mirage, even though the tree is much further away than the actual tree in the mirage. The tree in the mirage is one thing, the, tr the actual tree is something else. They're connected, but they are separate. When you can see the distinction between the perception and the actual object, you can start seeing the perception in motion and see which kinds of perception are helpful. And John Lee points this out in his breath meditation instructions. The way you perceive the breath in the first jhana is going to be different from the way you perceive it in the second, or the third, or the fourth. In the fourth jhana, you perceive the breath as a still energy field. And actually, it's a matter of tuning into the still energy field that's already there. And the way you can tune in is through this perception. What do you have in your current range of awareness? That's breath, but still. And if you can't focus on that quite yet, okay, focus on the perception of breathing in, breathing out, trying to get the right length of breath, the right quality of breath. But there comes a point where the understanding that of the breath that gets you into concentration gets in the way of your moving to more subtle levels of concentration. And so he gives you alternative ways of perceiving breath in the body. The in and out breath, and then there's the subtle breath energies that flow through the blood vessels, that flow through the nerves. They're like a very subtle form of the in and out breath. And then there's the still breath. The subtle form goes very fast. As soon as you start thinking of breathing in, it's already gone throughout the body. 
But then the still breath is something that's always there, regardless of whether there's an in-breath or an out-breath. The in-breath and out-breath can impinge on it, can squeeze it. But if you decide not to let the in and out breathing interfere with that sense of still energy, that moves you to a deeper level of concentration. And you can start observing this to see how the perception affects things. That's one way of getting a sense of disenchantment with the perception, disengagement. This is how you develop insight in the course of practicing concentration. It all depends on that ability to observe the mind in action and yet not get caught up in the action. This is why walking meditation is so important, because it helps give you practice in that ability. So don't think of the walking simply as something you do when you get too tired to sit. and You do it just enough to get ready to sit again. It's not a meditation break. It's an important part of the meditation. It's learning an added skill. The skill to be centered in the body, not only while you're sitting here with your eyes closed, but also while you're moving around, to be still in the midst of movement, to get a stronger sense of the mind as the observer that doesn't move along with the things it observes. So when we have that chant about respect for concentration, it doesn't mean only sitting in concentration, it also means respect for the practice of walking meditation as one of the skills you need to master as part of your concentration practice. And that, as the Buddha said, is how you get in the presence of nirvana. <laughs>